Cool. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here for this uh, joint press conference between the County of Imperial and the award-winning Imperial Valley College. Um, my name is Ed. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. It's a big announcement, and we have our, not just our partnering agencies between County of Imperial Valley College, but also those in the industry as well, which I will be introducing shortly. Uh, the first speaker we have today coming up will be Chairman of the Imperial County Board of Supervisors, uh, Mr. Ryan Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Robillard. Uh, it is a, it's a great, significant moment to be able to join IVC in announcing this vocational education focused on the lithium development and the future of Imperial County, the faces that you see before you and also next to you. Um, we are extremely happy and proud to be able to share this moment, to see that we are going to with industry, work towards building capacity for the employment opportunities that are to come. A conversation began in 21, introductions between our workforce development and uh, industry and IVC, SDSU, have fostered great strides in making that happen. And I'm happy to see this event and more to come showing that collaboration is successful and enduring. Thank you. I love this. And now to provide further comments, uh, Superintendent President of Imperial Valley College, Dr. Leonard Johnson. I'm a lot shorter than um, the chairman. Uh, welcome everyone, welcome to IVC, and thank you for joining us uh, today to discuss IVC's involvement in the emerging lithium industry. Um, before I get started, I definitely want to recognize some key folks in the audience. Uh, we have our Board of Trustees, Trustee Hart, Trustee Solis, please stand up and be recognized. Let's give them a big round of applause. And also, I just want to recognize our county supervisors. Um, please stand and be recognized. Thank you so much for your support. Let's give them a big round of applause. And then also all the elected officials. If you please just take a moment to stand up and be recognized, um, because of course, without your support, none of this would be possible. I see you back there. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're very excited to announce our strategic support um, for the lithium industry as the demand for lithium continues to soar in our country. IVC plans to play a, uh, is committed um, to playing a significant role in shaping the future of this sector. Lithium is a key, it, lithium a key component in batteries and um, energy systems has emerged as a crucial resource um, in a transition from sustainable um, in carbon neutral society. Recognizing the Im immense potential of the lithium industry, IVC is dedicated to leveraging its expertise, resources, and research capabilities to contribute to the development and growth of this important sector. To this end, IVC is implementing several initiatives that will foster innovation, research, education um, in the lith field of lithium. These initiatives include Research partnerships. IVC is actively establishing collaborative partnerships with industry leaders, research organizations, and government agencies. These partnerships will facilitate knowledge exchange, joint research projects, and exploration of new technology. Number two, academic programs. You'll learn more about those today. IVC is launching several specialized academic programs focused on lithium technical education particularly programs such as plant operator, instrumentation technician, and chemical lab technician. These programs will probably provide students with the knowledge and the hands-on skills required to support lithium companies and contribute to the growth of this industry. And number three, infrastructure development. 
IVC is investing in state-of-art facilities, laboratories, and the infrastructure to support lithium-related fields. With the passage of Measure B, we plan to build a stem slash lithium building and procure other cutting edge technology and resources to support the sector. We're very excited to contribute to the growth and development of the lithium industry, which is going to strengthen our local economy significantly and can be a game changer for our citizens. Our goal is to provide the workforce and the leaders who will drive the industry in the valley. With, the, with our strong academic programs, commitment to enhancing our infrastructure and collaborative spirit, IVC is poised to become a leading hub for producing the workforce needed to grow this industry. And as an Aspen winning community college, I don't believe there's another more worthy and capable college that can meet and exceed these needs because we are the best community college in the nation. And thank you. Thank you again for being here and I'll turn it over. And now we will have, uh, before we introduce some of the next speakers, um, we'd like, we welcome Energy Source, Control Thermal Resources, and Berkshire Hathaway Energy and Renewables for being here. And for one of the first speakers will be uh, Vince Signorati, Vice President of uh, Resource and Real Estate Ads, Assets from Energy Source. So, Mr. Signorati. Thanks, everyone. Really nice to be here. And uh, I guess first and foremost, I extend my thanks to Dr. Johnson <clears throat> and Imperial Valley College for hosting this. Uh, and also, I need to point out that uh, Efrain Silva has really uh, took the laboring oar to make this happen, uh, to develop the program, to the, develop the curriculum. Uh, we're really excited. We have a, a project that um, is shovel ready. Uh, we expect to break ground this fall. and. Uh, take about two years to build to build our project. Um, we expect that by early 2026, we'll be in full commercial operation. Uh, and what that means is 20,000 tons of uh, lithium hydroxide monohydrate, which is battery spec lithium. It would go straight from our facility to a cathode manufacturer. Um, we're going to generate uh, a number of jobs. We expect to, to hire about 70 to 75 men and women to operate our facility. Uh, we expect that the service industry uh, to support that work will double that number, so all in something like 220, 225 new jobs to support our plant, and ours is just one of 11. So um, exciting times for us and uh, exciting times for this industry. And it's, I it would be remiss if I didn't say we've, in a way we've come full circle from the discovery well at the Salton Sea was uh, completed in 1958, and it took 24 years before the first plant was commissioned at the Salton Sea. In 1958, the excitement was not about generating electricity using geothermal resources. It was about recovering minerals. So here we are. We're back to the future. Um, this is a very, very real uh, industry, and I uh, can't I can't believe I've had a front row seat uh, for all these years. But anyway, thanks for being here. Um, I'm sure there'll be time for questions later, but thank you all very much. And now from BHE Renewables, Lenny Sarion. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for um, inviting us here. Uh, especially Efrain, it's been a pleasure working with Efrain regarding the uh, curriculum that we're gonna kick off today. Um, we're very excited, and uh, actually when we first uh, thought of this um, lithium recovery project, we, of course, uh, identified what would be our workforce, because eventually we're gonna need a lot of people. And our first thing in our mind is to collaborate with IVC, because we need people from here uh, locally. We wanna support um, the local workforce, but we have to prepare them. And so this is really a very good uh, first step on preparing our uh, local wor workforce. And being here from 2008, um, Based on our experience uh, with Cal Energy and BHE Renewables, it's really difficult to find local workers, skilled workers. And so it's a challenge that 
all of us, um, energy source and CTR, will have to face as we develop our projects. And uh, just just an info, uh, Vince and and Will, they're both from Cal Energy before. Uh, I was just talking to Will. He was with Cal Energy many years ago, and then I also joined Cal Energy um, uh, Imperial Valley in 2008. But uh, I used to work with Cal Energy Philippines um, back in 1996, and then I got transferred here in 2008. So it's good to see people who are from the same uh, company, and then also developing in in the different uh, respective companies right now. Um, not only on this new curriculum, we are also uh, coordinating with uh, Professor Jim Fisher on the uh, pre-engineering uh, courses. Uh, that, I think that um, pr program is also important because we have to encourage our uh, young people to look at the opportunity of you know, having engineering background, engineering uh, work in the future, because there will be a lot of opportunities in Imperial Valley for engineers. And like in the past, we even had to petition workers from outside the United States just to get engineers. So we don't want that to continue. We want to have our engineers from here. So, um, with Cal Energy, we also started an internship program. Uh, and, to, and for this coming summer, I'm so glad that we're gonna have two interns from IVC. One would be a lab tech intern, and the other one is um, a student that would take up chemical engineering. So they're gonna start June 12, and I'm very happy that we're gonna have, for the first time, two local interns from IVC. So very excited and looking forward for more uh, workforce development. And now, uh, one of the hardest working men I know, I'm not saying that because he's my boss, uh, but he uh, really is uh, the leader of our county, uh, County Executive Officer, uh, Miguel Figueroa. First off, Dr. Johnson, thank you so much for hosting us here today. It's always good to see that uh, the partnership between the community, the county, and IBC continues to grow. Um, and that's to be acknowledged and recognized. Um, hearing everybody speak, um, I think we are at a time right now in which we're beginning to see uh, the efforts pay off. Uh, the efforts that possibly have taken close to 15 years to materialize, they're here before us right now. Um, with that said, I do want to acknowledge uh, some folks that are in the room here with us. Uh, folks that work hand in hand on a daily basis with Imperial Valley College, and that is the Imperial County Workforce Development Board. I see uh, board members here with us, so thank you so much for your support and making this happen as well. However, I was going to say hold your applause, but uh, the reason for that is because the board, as we know, provides direction, and that direction needs to be implemented. And with that, I have the Workforce Development Office staff with us as well. So thank you for your work and dedication to collaborate and make this happen. With that said, we have a lot before us um, as we continue to work diligently uh, not only in Sacramento, but in Washington, D.C., but most importantly here at the local level with all groups, all members of our environment um, that we call the beautiful Imperial County, that we work hard on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that we deliver what we're set forth. Uh, with that said, thank you so much, um, and we look forward to this being the start of another chapter as we continue to grow what we call Lithium Valley. Thank you. And for our last and uh, final speaker, um, you know, uh, please give it up for Dean of Economic and Workforce Development, Efrain Silva. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you don't know how happy I am to be here with you guys today. You know, when you work on something for such a long time, uh, we've been working on this for about a year's time, right? And, 
and it's conceptualized, and then you think about it, and you meet with people, and you plan, and you do this, all these things, and so finally see it to completion, right? Where we're actually gonna begin to get students to sign up for this program. It's such an, an incredible feeling um, that I have. And I have to say that this was the work of an awful lot of people, not just me, not just a few of us. It was a co true collaboration between industry partners, between our faculty, between content experts that met with us and donated their time to make sure that these programs, there are very few in the state that have plant operators, instrumentation technicians, very few colleges have this. So it was almost like inventing the wheel, but it was a really solid wheel because we have the input from content experts from the lithium companies to make sure that the course objectives and the equipment that we're using is one that applies to their industry. So I'm very, very proud to be here on behalf of everyone that worked on this for such a long time. Uh, it's truly an exciting day for Imperial Valley. So I wanna point something out to you guys. So what do you guys think of the name Lift? Lift the Valley, right? So LIFT us is an acronym for uh, Lithium Industry Workforce Training. We cut that to, to force, right? Uh, this is hot off the press. We just came up with this just a few days ago, and I have to give credit to other people. I'm not you know, that innovative to come up with this. Other people did. But I think it's a wonderful, wonderful name that truly reflects what we're trying to do here with you guys today. So uh, let me get started. So. Again, uh, I, I, like uh, Miguel indicated, um, I, I also want to thank Priscilla Lopez, where is Priscilla at? For her collaboration as the director of the Workforce Board. <laughs> Priscilla has been with me every step of the way as we develop these programs, and Priscilla, thank you so much for, for your collaboration. We're still continuing to working. We're, try, we're trying to find some funding through the State Workforce Board, that's an ongoing process, but I think that we'll, together we'll be able to do it. I also wanna recognize our, the lithium companies, the three companies that are, that are joining us today because they also, they, I recognize that they have a vested interest in this. That's just, that's just a given, right? But they were with us, they provided their input. Um, I have to say that it's kinda has mushroom across other disciplines because even though we're calling it a lithium program, this is, it has a lithium focus, but it's really across other disciplines as well, right? Um, so I know uh, ORMAT has been, it's been, it's gonna be expanding their geothermal operations significantly, so that means that they're gonna hire the same individuals that we're training. So uh, it's not just lithium, it's, it's across basically industrial innovation, in the industrial technology that we're preparing our local residents to be able to get those good jobs. Also, um, I want to recognize our faculty, our faculty who also are incredible people. They're practitioners in the field, and um, they, we met with them I don't know how many times, and they always, always were there for me, always, always willing to participate, willing to come up with ideas, willing to work long hours, and I want to recognize Mr. Winman, uh, Delbert, otherwise known as Chip. Right. Uh, Jose Velasquez, who is not with us, we have a curriculum meeting right now, so he's out there, uh, and, and other, fac other faculty and other people. Um, you know, recognize our chemistry faculty, right? Our chemistry faculty who are, had all doctorates in chemistry, they came up with a new, it was, it was a little hard at first, right, because these are academia people, right, and so they always believe that we should develop uh, transfer level programs. So to convince them to create CTE, chemistry classes and CTE biology classes, that was a new concept for them and they embraced it. And so we're very proud of we're one of very few colleges also that have chemistry as a CTE program, as a CTE discipline and also biology. So thank you for the faculty. Our math faculty, yes, our math faculty. Also uh, recognizing that we needed to create a math course because this is very heavy in math, very, very heavy in math. But we also wanted to create a math program that, that our students can identify with, right? Because a lot of math, I, I took math, I think all you guys did took math. Math tends to be a very abstract discipline, right? So we, we, we knew we needed something better than that for, our, for this program. So our math faculty created a, uh, a math course that is going to use just industrial applications for all the, the formulas and all the math concepts that our students need to know so that they can connect their math course 
to the program. And that's also an incredible accomplishment that we work with the math faculty to, be, to do that. So thank you guys for that. Um, I don't know how many of my, I, ha I am so fortunate to have just incredible staff that works for me in our, our economic and workforce development division. And I don't know, I don't see them here, but uh, well, they're over here on this side. These ladies here, the, all the people that work with me, they're just amazing. So can we recognize their work because they're <laughs> truly, truly amazing people. So to give you the history, uh, you no, know, we did an inventory. We met with the lithium companies to say, okay, what are you guys going to need? They gave us a list of things, welders, electricians, and a lot of things that we already trained for. Right? But we recognized that there was three significant gaps in industry, in disciplines, in jobs that they're gonna be hiring for that we had no training for. So we began to conceptualize three new programs. Uh, those programs are our plant operator program, our instrumentation technician program, and our chemical lab technician program, right? Uh, and this is based on their input. This, this is based on projected hiring needs that they anticipate hiring in the next year, year and a half to two years. So that's where the concept of these programs came about. Next slide. So recognizing that, you know, that we needed to come up with a workforce um, quickly, these three programs are all designed to be one-year short-term certificates. Like I said, they're, they're lithium focused, but they're not lithium exclusive, right? Because this is going to prepare students to work in geothermal operations, IID, uh, a, whole, a whole set of other in the industries that also hire plant operators and instrumentation technicians. So this is not exclusive to lithium. This is going to really open up opportunities for our, res our, our, our local residents to work here in Imperial Valley, I hope they stay, but also there's gonna be opportunities throughout the country. There's a huge shortage of these technicians that we're preparing our students uh, to become. The other thing, um, we, we are continuing to purchase equipment. You see the equipment behind me? This is state-of-the-art equipment that we are continuing to purchase. Three new modules arrived today. There was just no space to put them here. But be assured that our students are going to learn on the latest technology there is to prepare them for those jobs. And I hope when we're done, come over and look at this equipment, because it's really, really the latest there is. And I will tell you, it's very expensive, so don't, don't touch it. <laughs> uh, also, besides, you know, besides the certification, we also recognize that students need what we call industry-recognized credentials, right? So this, an industry-recognized credential gives employers a true testament of what, employer, what students need, have, have learned, right? Because they have to take a test, and so when, when an employer sees an industry-recognized credential, they identify what that is. It's not an abstract certificate, it's actually a certificate that identifies for them their KSA. So we're working with two primary certification agencies. One is called SACA, which stands for Smart Automation Certification Alliance. And we're also working with another company called NC3, which stands for National Coalition of Certification Centers. So our students are gonna get certified by SACA, by NC3, or perhaps by both of them. We're still working that out. Uh, we're starting with SACA. Our faculty is gonna get certified in the next couple of weeks so that they can test the students and award their own individual certificates to students. So they, our students walk away with their, and not just their IBC certificate, but a number of industry-recognized credentials. So, okay, finally to the, to the meat of this. So we are beginning our plant operator program in fall, right? So uh, our students will be able to sign up for classes beginning registration for fall semester, which I think be begins in early July, right? We are starting with two cohorts because we recognize that there's also individuals in our community that perhaps are working and can't quit their jobs to come and become plan operators, so for that reason, we're starting an evening cohort to allow working individuals to be able to get the same opportunities, and also a, a day cohort uh, for students that can be here in the daytime, right? Uh, these courses are gonna be taught by very experienced faculty. I want to uh, recognize in the audience our incoming plant operator professor, that's uh, Mr. Rob Serrano, he's sitting right here. And, and Rob has an incredible resume. Uh, we, are, we are truly fortunate to have found an individual locally here from Imperial Valley. You know, a, a Navy veteran that worked in these kinds of things, 
as a, as a Navy officer and also working in the industry. Uh, he truly uh, understands operations. He truly understands instrumentation. And to have found someone with those credentials here in Imperial Valley that knows our community, knows our students, uh, was an incredible, uh, an incredible fortunate to be able to, to have him on board. So, Ralph, thank you so much for, for, and he's joined by his wife and his beautiful daughter. So again, we're starting August 14th. That's, that's when the classes began. Uh, our students will be completed by uh, August, by in a spring semester. That will be our first cohort. Uh, some of the companies are going to begin to hire some. I think they anticipate hiring either late 24 or early 25. So they'll have a group of ready-to-go applicants that, that will have the skill sets that they're looking to have to be able to work in their operations. I think that might be my last slide, I think. Oh, no? Oh, no. So the other two programs that we talked about, instrumentation technician and chemical lab, we're not rolling those out in, in fall because the labor projections for these individuals that will hire instrumentation techs and chem lab techs are not for 24. Uh, they expect to hire those individuals later as construction and operations develop. So we're, we're timing our rollout for these programs to coincide and align with expected higher needs, right? I don't want to graduate a class of chem labs technicians in, in fall and then have to wait a year or two years to get hired. That, that's, that's not a good idea. So we're rolling out the new programs based on expected labor needs from the, from the lithium companies and other companies as well. Right, uh, let's see, what else do I have next? Okay, so this is not the end. This is actually the beginning, right? We are continuing to explore possibilities. Uh, Dr. Johnson mentioned our, our STEM building that's gonna house our lithium programs and others. Uh, that's, we're still probably a few years away from that, but that's exciting, you know, to be able to have that basic infrastructure. So along with the infrastructure we just, today, this morning, uh, we submitted our, our application for a grant with the Department of Energy to um, hopefully uh, receive the grants and be able to award the funds to become an, an, an industrial assessment center, right? Now, we're uh, far away from being awarded. This, we just submitted the application today, but maybe that's just the beginning and maybe our STEM center can be recognized as an industrial assessment center. We, we, that'll come with a lot of funding as well, right? We're looking at other, other opportunities. Um, I think Lenny mentioned something about plant mechanic. They're, they're, I have identified a need for us to work on a curriculum on plant mechanic. Uh, PC, uh, PLCs, project con logic controllers, uh, we have that incorporated in some of our programs, but we're looking to maybe develop a full certificate program in, in PLCs. And also uh, Megatronics. I don't know what that is, but I know Chip knows what it is because he mentioned it, right? <laughs> but uh, so this is, we're, we're, this is an ever-expanding um, uh, opportunity for our residents to be able to get those good jobs and be able to, you know, improve their qu the quality of life of our residents, the quality of life of our Imperial County. And I I'm so proud to be here in front of you with, with these news. I am so proud to have found a team of, of people, faculty, uh, staff, uh, collaborators, partners that just have been incredible. And so this is, this is the result of all those collaborations and, and long meetings and and uh, um, you know, to finally be here with all of you. I think that's my last slide, isn't it? Yes, it is. I am done, There's, there may be questions. So we're looking between, about between 25 and 30. And this is very, gonna be highly intensive, highly, highly intensive to be able to get um, done with the curriculum and the certifications in a year's time. Any other questions for me or for anybody else? Yes, sir. I don't know. I always tell people I'm, I'm just an administrator. I'm not a technician. So I don't know. Chip, do you, do you guys know the answer to that? There don't have to be a note. The plan for it was to uh, teach the teacher training and go build the spot and then the field. Thank you. So the answer was, Chip, come over here. <laughs> the question and the answer. 
so the question, the, the industry certification that I spoke about, whether those need to be renewed periodically, right? Yeah. What was the question, I'm sorry? Was it the same question? Yeah, same question. Oh, uh, you couldn't hear me over there, I'm, my apologies. But um, the certificate should be a standalone certificate. When the students uh, or trainees get their certificate and uh, the certification, they would be allowed to uh, go into the field, into the job, and then get additionally trained by the businesses they're working for. Control thermal resources, energy source. So uh, it's a standalone. It shouldn't be renewed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Stick around in case there's sure. another question. <laughs> yes. No, there's no prerequisites uh, to this. And uh, again, we intentionally, so I didn't put the curriculum there, but the, uh, basically the curriculum is uh, HASMAT certification. So we have a new HASMAT course. Uh, Interestingly enough, all of the three disciplines, the, the, the industry said students need to know Excel, they need to know Word. So this, those are embedded in the certificate programs and then each program has their own individual plan operator instrumentation in, chem, in chemistry classes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? Thank you so much. I guess we'll open up one last time. Anyone have questions for anyone else on the panel? If not, uh, on behalf of the county, we'd like to thank uh, one of the top community colleges in the nation, Imperial Valley College, for hosting us, as well as recognize uh, Mr. Silva and uh, Priscilla Lopez. About a week and a half ago, they had this idea to really make this announcement, show the collaboration, and show all the work. So can we give a round of applause for Ms. Lopez and Mr. Silva? <laughs> With that being said, thank you all who are in attendance and those watching on our Facebook Live. Uh, have a great day. Thank you.